Good day, sir and everyone. I'm Dennis Abrea from Calamba, Laguna, a maritime instructor at Malayan College, Laguna. I'm here today to talk to you about subdivision of law, its shape, and nationality, and registration of ship. Thank you for being here today. Okay, so introduction, subdivision of law. So what is law? So definition of law. The law is set of socially enacted and sanctioned rules of conduct that apply to members of society. The law is the set of rules that govern the relationship between men. Its function is to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the members of society within it. It is used to pacify relationship between individuals. And its purpose is also to organize society in order to protect the interests, property, essential in living together. Law is the foundation of social order. So, law. There are three main points of the definition of law. A set of rules regulates interactions between people and parties. Enforceable through sanction. Okay. So, as you can see, there are symbols of a law. Yeah. Okay, definition of subdivision of law. The classification of law are the different categories into which all areas of law can be collated. A particular classification of law encompasses all type of law, but it distributes them according to a particular and unique characteristics. So, here are some classification. No? Law has been classified in various ways. The four main divisions are as follow. We have the public law and private law, criminal law and civil law, municipal law or other known as domestic law, and international law. And the last, the substantive law and the procedural law. Okay, to define each and every law. Here is the public law, the, the distinction of public and private law. Or eus publicum. No? Public law consists of all the rules of law relating to the organization and functioning of the state and to relations between public authorities and individual. So, it concerned with the matters that affect private law or eus privatum, it concerned with the matters that affect the rights and duties of individuals among themselves. It is intended to give compensation to person injured to enable property to be recovered from wrongdoers or what we call offenders and to enforce obligation. No? Okay. So another is Constitution Law. Constitution Law is the set of legal rules relating to institution through which authority is established and transmitted or exercised in the state. The classic theory of the state recognizes three powers. So these are the legislative, executive function, and judicial function. So, so that are the branches. No? Okay, next. Another type of law is what we call the administrative law. It is the body of law that governs the day-to-day -day management of public affairs by administrative bodies. A several branches can be distinguished by a tax law with a connection with financial legislation, a social legislation. The purpose is to protect individual against the difficulties of life. 
environmental legislation that protect the environment no? or that protects the living environment. Public servant rights. This applies to all those who work in the public service. Okay. Another one is criminal law. Criminal law is the body of law that organized by means of penalties. The repressions of violation of social order. An offense of active a passive behavior prohibited by law and punishable according to its seriousness by a penalty. So the penalty may consist of fine or imprisonment, no? which are divided into different uh, categories or different. Here in Philippines, what we have, as per my research, we have so many. No? The, Reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, reclusion correctional, or prisión mayor, prisión correctional, something like that, no? and others. Yeah. There are one of the example of uh, penalties uh, when you commit a felony or a crime. Offenses against the state. The criminal offender is persecuted by the public prosecutor yeah. okay that also the fine are there is uh, what they call the minimum medium and the maximum no? which are uh, explained on the uh, codal of criminal law procedural law refers to all the rules uh, governing the organization and activity of the courts which apply the law so in a broad sense, it means all the forms to be represented, uh, respected for the realization of the right or set of rules. So these are set of rules. No? In narrow sense, procedural law refers more particularly to judicial proceedings, no? also known as judicial law or procedural law. So there are three types of procedure that are primarily intended to define the different organs of justice. We have the criminal, which uh, rules of form are strict in order to guarantee the accused or the accused. A administrative defines all the formalities for the correction and application. And the last, the civil law, which is also called a private judicial law. Substantive law it deals with the right, duties, liberties, power, and all other matters that are not matters purely on practice and procedure. It is the law that governs our daily practice and conduct. And next is the civil law. Civil law has long been confused with private law. The rules that may be applied to all individuals. Rules that apply to only one category of person. It applies indiscriminately to all individuals and depends on the competence of the confederation. It also determines the essential consequences of the individual means, facts, and actions, as well as their legal situation. Family law, right of affiliation, matrimonial regimes, and the property law. Of course, these are the branches of civil law. Here, what we have this family and person no, as what I have researched. Okay. okay. The next is commercial law or business law. It is the fundamental part of private law that contains all the rules of law that applies so commercial relationship relationships. So there are three categories. No number one role. Number one is roles of law relating to commercial enterprises, which is commercial law defines the status of trade and commercial companies. And here in our codal, I, I researched the special or what we call special commercial law. 
Rules of law relating to property and commercial activity place a particular ro role between traders. Right, ideal relationship that organize official officials. An intellectual property law and industrial property. Number D is the special fields, which is covered by banking law, maritime law, and insurance law. So, those are the topics under the commercial law or business law. Okay, the international law. When we are talking about the international law, it's also there is a private international law and the public international law. So, meaning in a private international law, it is a set of rules of domestic law or what we call municipal law that resolve conflicts arising from legal problems that include foreign elements. This rules designate the competent authority to judge. And now the public international law. All the rules of law that govern the relations between subjects of international. Okay. So public international law is also called droids this genes from the Latin use gen theum. It can be defined by its sources, all the rules of law whose source is international. By its purpose, it is called upon to regulate relations between states, their relationship with international organization, and regulates the function of international organizations. Okay, next. Now, in our second topic, about the maritime law on a ship, nationality, and registration of ships. Uh, our intended learning outcome on this topic is the state the most legal definition of ship, describe a ship in registration, to registration carriage, pollution, salvage, and labor relations. Okay, list the criteria used to decide whether floating structure is a ship and explain the concept of nationality of a ship as the relationship between a ship and her flag state. So these are the learning outcomes. Explain the need for us ship to have nationality to indicate which state exercise the flag state, the jurisdiction and diplomatic protection. What rights a ship enjoys and what obligation she is subjected to when Navigating on the high seas. Another is international limits for the state. A right to grant nationality to a ship. Describe the purpose of registration of the ship and the consequences of being not accepted as an act of granting the nationality. Explain the idea of open and open and second registry. Okay, these are the uh, learnings that we will tackle on this uh, topic. Okay, basal, no? or what we call ship, no? by legal definition. Every kind of water and aircraft or other contrabands no? used or capable of being used as a means of transportation on water. So, meaning, any in the use uh, crop, no? even uh, I believe the banana banana steam, no? if we use to uh, uh, create and use it as a transportation, um, we can consider that as a vessel or a ship. Just example, no? or on water and in the air, as well as any ship. Boat, barge, or other watercraft, or any structure capable of floating the water on the water. So that is the uh, definition on legal terms. Okay, nationality and registration of ship. 
Ship registration is the process by which a ship is documented and given the nationality of the country to which the ship has been documented. So, one of the example is Panama. Those are the example of flags, no? flags state. We have the Panama, Liberia, the uh, Japan flag or Antigua Barbuda. So those are example of flag state no? that I've been uh, 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 I bought on one of that vessel. I also bought in a Singapore flag. Okay, so the nationality allows a ship to travel internationally, inter inter internationally, as it is proof of ownership of the vessel. International law requires that every ship be registered no, in a country called its flag state. So. A ship is subject to the law of its flag state. So every flag state have different uh, set of rules. No, there are set of rules that you will follow if you are a Singaporean flag, Panamanian flag, Antigua Barbuda flag. They have different kinds or set of rules no? that you have to follow. You have to uh, uh, pass all their uh, requirement in order to be uh, one of their uh, members of the state. Okay, it is usual to say that the ship sails under the flag of the country of registration. Okay. So here is my uh, uh, research on law of trades of goods by sea. The law of carriage of goods by sea is a body of law that governs the rights and duties of a shippers, carries, and on consignee of marine cargo. Primarily concerned with the cargo claim, this body of law is an aspect of international commercial law and maritime law. The typical obligation of a carrier by sea to a shipper of a cargo are to provide a seaworthy ship. No? Which also uh, being conduct or assessed by the flag state, no? It's uh, there's another third party or what we call the recognized organization to assess your vessel in providing the uh, certificates to certify you as a seaworthy ship, no? So to issue a bill of loading, no? To properly and carefully load, handle, store, carry, keep. Carry, keep, for, and discharge the goods carrier. To proceed with reasonable dispatch, to follow the agreed route. No? So, all of these are under the carriers of the USMC. Next, pollution. The flag states have the obligation to protect and preserve the environment. No? They are also, they have to be. Uh, compliance with the Maritime Pollution Convention. They will issue a certificate and they will assess also by the flag state, no? But the inspection will be carried out by the third party, what we call the recognized authority. Or one of the examples are the, the German Lloyds, no? Those are the recognized body. To inspect your vessel. No? Once you have passed the inspection, and they will issue a certificate under the name of your flag state. No? Okay, state shall cooperate on a global basis as appropriate on a regional basis, directly or through competent international organizations. No? So, in formulating and elaborating international rules. Standards and commended practices and procedures consistent with the convention. So, for the protection and preservation of the marine environment, taking into account characteristic and regional features. So, those are the under the pollution. Salvage, no? salvage, 
The law of salvage is a principle or maritime law thereby any person who helps or recover another person's ship or cargo in peril at sea is entitled to a reward or commensurate with the value of property sold. Maritime law is inherently international and although salvage law salvage law vary from one country to another. Generally, there are established conditions to be met no? to allow a claim of salvage. Okay. The vessel must be peril in peril no? or either immediate or forthcoming. The salver must be acting voluntarily and under no pre-existing contract. And the salver must be successful in their efforts to through the payment for partial success and may be granted if the environment's environment is protected. Okay. Next maritime labor relation. The guidelines of flag state inspection under Maritime Labor Convention 2006. No? It contains in this book are an important resource for implementing flag state responsibilities under the MLC 2006. They were adopted by the International Labor Organization in September 2008 together with the guidelines for state uh, for state control officers carrying on inspection under the MLC 2006. So the requirements of MLC as implemented no, nationally, the chapter 1 contains the overview no, of the special features of MLC and its concept. The chapter 2 is it provides overview procedures in certification including uh, areas of national flexibility and process for responding to complaints. The main inspection tools is provided by. On Chapter 3, a basic requirements to be complied with the list of showing to how to check the requirements and deficiencies in connection with this requirement. And Chapter 4, on this uh, convention, a logo provides guidance on action to be taken when deficiency as are found and when a ship may have to be detained. Okay, the duties of flag state laid down under Article 94 of Unclosed 1982 no, that every state shall effectively exercise its jurisdiction and control in administrative, technical, and social matters over ship Flying its flag. No. Requirements of ship to be registered depending on the flag state regulation, but basically based on uh, the one of the of flag state, it should be it is 24 meters and over in tonnage in length. No. And its purpose is to earn income by way of cargo. Uh, passengers or other services and it is engaged on international voyage so those are the requirements okay. so okay this done okay the criteria used to decide whether a floating structure is a ship okay so the term basil includes every kind of water an air cup or other contrabands that use or capable of being used as a means of transportation on water or on water and in the water as well as any ship, boat, barge or other watercraft or any structure capable of floating on the water also includes a barge, lighter or other like vessel a hovercraft or other thing that driving pull a partial support in the atmosphere from the reaction of air against the surface. 
of the water over which it operates, the submarine or other submersible. Okay. So the concept of nationality of ship as the relationship between a ship over her flag state that every state shall fix the condition for the grants of its nationality to ships, for the registration of ship in its territory, and for the right to fly its flag. Ships have the nationality of the state whose flag they are entitled to fly. There must exist a genuine link between the state and the ship. Okay. Every state shall issue the ships to which it is has granted to write to apply its flag documents to that effect, no? And in order to comply with these documents, you have to be uh, inspected by their uh, recognized organization again, no? That your ship is sovereignty and complying all the uh, requirements of a flag state. A ship's flag state exercise regulatory control over the vessel and is required to inspect regularly no, certify that the ship's equipment and crew and issue safety and pollution prevention documents. The organizations the organization which actually register the ships is known as its registry. Registry may be government or private agencies. No? In some cases, such as the United States Alternatively Compliance Program, the registry can assign a third party to administer inspection. Okay, these are the rights to enjoy. The high seas being open to all nations, no state may validly purport to subject any part of them to its sovereignty. A freedom of high seas is exercised under the condition laid down by these articles and they and by the other rules of international law. It comprises inter alia both for coastal and non coastal states. These are the following that you can enjoy the freedom of navigation, a freedom of fishing. A freedom to lay submarine cables and pipelines, and a freedom to fly over the high seas. Okay. Next, the one is the this freedom and other which are recognized by the general principle of international law shall be exercised by all states with reasonable regard. To the interest of the other states in their exercise of the freedom of the high seas. Obligation or duty to render assistance. No? Every state shall require the master of a ship flying its flag is so far as and she can do so without serious danger to the ship, the crew, or the passengers. You should to render assistance. To any person found at sea in the danger of being lost, to proceed B, no? to proceed with all possible speed to the rescue of person in distress, if informed of their need of assistance, in so far as such action may reasonably be expected of him, and C, that after collision, no? to render assistance to the other ship its crew and its passenger and where possible to inform the other ship of the name of his own ship, its port of registry and the nearest port at which it will call. So United Nations Convention for Registration of Ships. The Convention of Registration of Ship would record that a flag state be linked to its ship. No? Either by having an economic stake in the ownership of the each ship or by providing mariners to crew the ships. The flag state must demonstrate its connection with the ship that genuinely be exercising effective no? jurisdiction, control, administrative, technical, and social matters 
over ships flying its flag. Okay, so they still sail with these are the international limits for the state right to grant nationality to a ship. The vessel sail within the exclusive economic zone. You know? So the vessel are sailing only at the EEZ, you know? uh, about 200 nautical miles. You know? So the international or plug state cannot issue you a right to grant you a nationality. And the uh, territorial sea or in the internal waters of the state. Or you are sailing the archipelagic waters of an archipelagic state. So the other flag state cannot issue you on that matter. Okay, what are the practical purposes of registration a ship? The purpose of registration is to enable the ship to trade internationally. To facil facilitate easier sale and purchase of the ship. And to facilitate, uh, facilitate ship finance, mortgages may not be obtainable for unregistered ship. Okay, so that are the purpose of registration of a ship. So here is the difference between uh, open registry and second registry. An open registry is a system whereby a country may allow ships to be registered there and fly the country's flag without the real owner having any definite connection without, with the country. The phrase is similar to flag of convenience. No? Flag of convenience means the term flag of convenience describes the business practice of registering a merchant ship in a sovereign state different from that of the ship's owner and flying the state civil ensign on the ship. Ships are registered under flags of convenience to reduce operating costs or avoid the regulations of owner's country. Okay, so now we have the second register. What do you mean by second register? What is second register? Register which is in some cases are established under separate legislation to the parent register. As in the case, as in the case of the NIS register of Norway, and in the other cases are established in an offshore territory with legal links to the parent country, for example. The register of Isle of Man, which is linked to the UK. So that is the second register. There were two plug states here. In what way is a second registry different from a plug of convenience? While money, taxation, while money, taxation, and other formalities are often simplified. There must still be some from genuine link between the owners and the plug state. For example, through a company established in a plug state. Okay, next. So these are what I have uh, used as my reference. Thank you for uh, listening to my presentation. Um, okay. See you, sir, and thank you. And stay safe and God bless us all.